Welcome back to my channel, the Aurora Restoration Project. This is our third episode, and in the last 11 days, we've actually had over 10,000 subscribers. That's amazing, and thank you very much for subscribing. Our viewers have shown a lot of love towards restoring this old ship, and for that I'm very thankful and humbled. Many of our viewers have taken an interest in either volunteering or donating towards the restoration of the Aurora. For that being said, I've created a Patreon group. If you join our group, I'm gonna offer you content that's only available to our Patreon subscribers, as well as merchandise that you can only get within that group. So please come support us and join our Patreon. The link is down below. So in this video, I'd like to dive into some of the rich history of the Aurora and show you why she's one of the most historic luxury liners left in existence still today. Later in this video, I'd like to show you a project that we're currently working on, the railing and the cap rails. Uh, there's, there's a lot of metalwork and a lot of woodwork going on, and we're hoping to make uh, some pretty good progress during 2022. So we'll show a lot of this uh, during the next videos as things start to come back. So if you're enjoying our project videos, like, subscribe, and share. If you keep watching, we'll keep making videos. When I found the Aurora, she was named the Faithful, and she was in rough condition to say the least. She had garbage everywhere. I mean, completely filled full of garbage. And I really had to see the light through the trees in order to continue on this project. I was not a boat guy. I didn't know anything about ships, but I knew that this thing had a, a big history and I had to do something about it. So I did. She was launched as the Wappen von Hamburg in 1955, and she was the first significant ship that Germany was permitted to build post-World War II. She was also the test platform for Mercedes Maybach diesel electric propulsion system. She was originally built as a ferry and serviced from Cuxhaven, Germany to Helgoland, Germany, which is a little vacation island about three hours off the coast of Germany. At the time, many called her the phoenix that rose from the ashes. When built, the Wappen von Hamburg was the most technologically advanced ship of her time. She would move on to become one of the most luxurious pocket cruise ships to service the Greek islands. During the early 1960s, she started her film career as the Spectre Yacht in From Russia With Love, the second James Bond installment. She was known throughout the world to have some of the most beautiful lines of any liner ever built. This was just the start of her career. I'll talk about a lot more in the next videos. When it was finally time to start on the decks, uh, I started tearing up the plastic and geez, the decks were just absolutely done. Some of it was teak and some of it was a teak substitute, I'm not sure, maybe a mahogany, and it looked terrible. Uh, the railings were no exception either. They were bent up, broke. Uh, they, they, they did not survive the test of time. So we tore up the decks and we started removing all of the old railing, but the cap rails, it looked just good enough to save. We didn't want to get rid of any of that. So we, we took our plasma cutter and our angle grinders and anything that we could take to cut, and we took these things apart. We dismantled them and we kept what we could and we got rid of the rest. There was so much rusty metal attached to these cap rails, I didn't really know if it could be saved. Uh, could we run this thing through a planer? Could we sand it? What, what could we do at this point of the game? I didn't want to lose any of it because it's really hard to get the old growth teak. After checking all the alternatives, uh, we decided to, at all costs, uh, save what we could of this old teak. 
The steel rails, that was a whole nother problem. This stuff was done. Uh, we had to get rid of all of this stuff and we're still in the process of getting rid of it. But as you can see, it didn't stand the test of time like, uh, like the teak did. It's amazing that the wood could actually last longer than the steel. Ah, and the gutters. Yeah, this was, uh, this was an interesting day. Removing this thick steel and finding a bunch of holes, that's uh, never something that you want to see when you're working on a ship. I'm actually surprised I didn't find more holes than I did. And a lot of this rust slag actually patched the holes so the water wouldn't intrude into the ship. So after I removed all this rust slag, I actually welded up all of the holes that I found and put a nice coat of epoxy paint on. But that's only gonna be good for a few years. So I think uh, our next move is gonna be to cut out the old gutters and actually weld in new steel. And although it seems like a huge job, it's, you know, it's actually a fairly simple job. Out of all the tools I've used, this uh, air hammer has proven to be about the most effective one towards rust. I mean, it takes everything down. And look at this, this is just, this was just amazing. This stuff had been building up for so many years. It, it was ugly. And now, it doesn't look so ugly anymore. And after removing all the rust slag, we had big piles on the deck that we had to scoop up and take to the landfill. And then uh, you know, the next fun stage is to repair all of the metal. You could see a bunch of holes if you look in, at the gutters and, and uh, they're on the sides, they're in the back. Things that people you know, cut away in order to make the gutters uh, work for what they needed them to work for but they didn't really solve any problem. All they did was help to rot the decks out. So after cleanup, I cut away the old metal and you can see that big piece of metal there actually had big holes in it and it actually, anything that rained onto the decks would go right onto the fan tail and it did that for years and it actually rotted out a lot of the fan tail. One of the most important parts of restoring a ship is definitely to take care of your decks first. And these decks had no maintenance for years and years. All of the railings needed to be disposed of. And this piece of wood that I have my hand on, that piece of wood I wanted to try and save. That's one of the worst pieces of wood. If we could save that, we could save all of it. For safety reasons, I had to put on another rail immediately. So I had to prep all of the metal and go buy new pipe in order to get this job underway. Before I started putting on railing, however, I had to finish this uh, welding of the gutters that I needed to, to do, or else I wouldn't be able to access it after I started putting up the railing. So I cut out the pieces, clamped them into place, and welded them in. It was as easy as that. So I gave my dad the job of working on the old rails. His first task was to pull out all of the metal appendages that actually uh, resided on each piece of wood. And they did not want to come out. These things were rusted in there and we thought we would have to destroy a lot of the wood in order to remove this stuff. And with a little finesse, he managed to get most of it out. Uh, all of this uh, excess metal, I thought, when we started trying to get it out, that the wood would break and we would find out that the wood was far more rotted than anticipated.
So while he was working on the wood, I was working on the steel railing. And geez, these things were not easy. To get one of these things straight up and down, you can't use a regular level. So I had to use a digital level and measure out uh, some of the existing railing in order to get the, you know, the right angle. Okay, so we've taken the hole saw, and we've drilled out a bunch of plugs out of this piece of teak, and we've got them ready. We've got a pile of them here. So we can get started. We're gonna drill out these holes and put some plugs in. Okay, let's get started. Now we've got our glue in place, got the, got the plugs in place, we'll let them set, and then we'll come back and sand it down. Okay, we've let this set overnight, we'll make sure all everything's set up, the plugs and everything. We sanded it down, making sure to sand with the grain, and uh, as you can see, it's almost disappeared. This one had a little stain around it before and it's showing through, so it gives the wood a little more character. But this one is practically invisible. Okay, that finishes our first coat. We're gonna put two or three more coats on here before we do our final sanding and before we put on our final coat. But while we're waiting for this one to dry, take a look at the grains in this wood. This is old growth wood. You just can't get this anymore. And that's why we're trying to preserve as much of this as we can. The rotten parts of the railing needed some wood repair, and these were ugly. You could see where the bolts had actually rotted clear through. So I decided I would try a technique that I thought up uh, to splice some new wood in. I had to drill a hole in the wood and actually pull out this stuff. I mean, it's pretty self-explanatory, really. I just needed to make a giant plug that went halfway through the wood. I'm sure that there's a lot better ways to do this job, but this is what I had on hand and it seemed like the most reasonable solution. I had a few more teak boards on hand, so I decided to cut my plugs out of a similar wood. It seemed to be very difficult to cut, but it seemed to work out pretty good. Now before we finish putting the final coats on this piece of rail, I needed to size it up to the new steel that we just installed. It didn't quite weld it yet, but it looks great. Thank you so much for watching my video. If you enjoyed this, please like and subscribe.